Hey guys, Rex here, and welcome back to map making. Now, before we get started with anything in this episode, I have a lot of announcements, well not a lot of announcements to make, we have a lot of stuff to go over because I have been doing a lot of work in between episodes in this map. Um, because I really want to step on the gas with this map, because I think that I might be able to release this map for my 25,000 subscriber special, which would be coming up very soon. So I could do that. I could re try and, uh, like I said, step on the gas with this because a lot of things need to be done and release it for my 25,000 subscriber special, which could be difficult and would involve uh, not working on the Let's Play as much or tutorials or anything like that. Um, but I would be doing a little bit of map making and a lot of just work on this off camera. So. I have been doing a lot of work already, and before we get started, we're going to go over everything that I've done. But I want you to put in the comments whether you think it would be a good idea for me to work really hard on this and try and release it for my 25,000 subscriber special, or whether I should just sort of leave it, release it whenever I want, not have a 25,000 subscriber special. Uh, well, I might, but it would be something different. And focus, well not focus, but like just do what I've been doing. Just do a sum of map making, some LP, some tutorials. Um, so I want you to leave a comment and let me know what I should do. Um, and that's that. So now let's go over the huge amount of things that I've done on this map between the last episode and this episode. Um, now I've been doing a lot of things with Superlink and a lot of things by myself and so let's start here. This is the lobby for the map. It's rather small because this is meant to be a four player map around four players. Uh, it has a nice... Uh, Superlink built this of course. It's got a nice trim here, nice four little things that are all slightly different. Um, so here we've got credits, we've got this joining and leaving, start game button, and change required kills to win. Uh, I used the uh, invisible wither skulls with a custom name here, which was a feature added in one of the recent snapshots, uh, that any entity can have a name tag. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I think it adds a really cool sort of glowiness to the room, whereas everything else is dark and sort of lit up by the moon. Um, and then we got these bright glowy texts that sort of move around, and it looks really cool in my opinion. Uh, yeah, so over here we've got credits, got some heads, some signs here. Let's say what we've done. So I've done the redstone and game design, Superlink did the level design, and the he actually built everything. Um, originally I was going to make it so when you right click on the sign here, it takes you to my YouTube channel. And that doesn't actually work with signs. I didn't know that, but I, I was wondering, why is it not working? Why is it not working? And then I looked it up and it's like, oh, it just doesn't work. I don't know whether that's a bug or not, but yeah, it would be nice if we could do that. Uh, here we've got uh, a thing that adds you to the queue, or removes you from the queue, or adds you to the spectating queue. So you right click on these, it obviously doesn't work yet, I haven't had time to put this together, but you right click on the different signs to um, do the different actions here. So we, this will put us in the next game, this will make us a spectator in the next game, and this will make it so we stay in the lobby in the next game. And then obviously you start the game by pushing this button. Um, and I might need to merge two of these together because one of the actual things I need is a sign that when you right click on it has a bunch of information about the game because right now there's no place for that. Uh, here we've got a little thing that is currently broken because I've been working out some stuff. Um, it's, it changes the required kills you need to win. So to win this map I'm going to make it so you have to kill, like make a certain amount of kills rather than have a certain amount of lives because I think that will make the game more fun. Um, so yeah, the buttons just change it, doesn't exactly work at the moment. Um, so that's the lobby, so now let's move on to the, the, let's just go to the main map area. Okay, I changed my mind, let's go to the redstone. So yeah, I have this little thing set up. If I use these potions, I can teleport to the various locations using that thing. It's not very good redstone, it's just so I can get around. Um, so yeah, obviously I move things around. Uh, the redstone's now over here, not over by the actual map. 
because these fill clocks actually cause quite a bit of lag when it comes to um, uh, ping because I think it has to transmit the data that this is quickly being filled back and forth to the client and that will lag so we do not want any players within this radius which is why the lobby is way over a thousand blocks one way and the map is a thousand blocks the other way uh, but this here is the spot I don't know did I already say that that this is the area where you spawn and get teleported to the lobby uh, obviously cleaned up the redstone I added some little color color coding and signs here um, and I actually did some play testing of the map and then we added a couple features that I'm going to go over in I'll go over some right now so yeah first with the power-ups we changed it so um, well previously when we went up to a power-up it would execute from the player and set the power-ups cooldown back to 600 and then that would tell the system okay um, he picked up the power-up and then the cooldown would decrease from 600 now what it does is it sets it to 10,000 when we get close to the power up and then the system says okay it's at 10,000 and then what that does notice we add another random command block thing here that will um, pick a random cooldown time between 30 seconds and one minute and assign it to the power up uh, and then no, yeah uh, the 10,000 just tells it that it still needs to be assigned and then it gets assigned and then it works like that uh, this here is attached to it as well. This is our pest control command block. Just kills the endermites because I forgot that endermites will spawn now when we use ender pearls, and we do not want that. We don't don't want endermites walking around in our map. I mean, it wouldn't be too big of a deal, but we we don't want them there. Um, is that all I've done? Oh yes, uh, I've done a balance change here. I mean, so when you kill someone, you get regeneration. Now I could modify this in the future. Uh, because me and Superlink did do some playtesting, we couldn't get enough people so that we can get the full four people. So we had two people, it, so it was a bit weird. You could run around the thing and not really find anyone, but um, I'm going to say that minimum three players is really re required or recommended for this map. Um, let's see, is there anything else I changed? It doesn't seem like there's anything I changed. Uh, there is stuff that I'm going to change, though. Um, oh, yes. Uh, one thing I did is I just... A lot of the commands I I optimized, just made it so it spams the console less and writes and reads from the map files a lot. Well, yeah, mm, yeah, I guess sort of some stuff that should in theory reduce the amount of lag, uh, which is what I want to do. I want to reduce the amount of lag because these fill clocks can induce a, a lot of lag sometimes depending on how many commands are hooked up so you want to stay away from these as much as possible but here we really need them to get to make it as accurate as possible and for stuff like the arrow particles we need it because we need a clock that can go as fast as absolutely possible um, so now let's move on to the actual map I don't think I made very many changes there and if I forgot any lol uh, one second if I forgot any changes that I forgot to mention in this clip, I'll put them in the next clip. Sorry, I said lol there because um, what happened is I threw a night vis vision potion, then teleported away, and now that I'm teleporting back, the chunks are loaded, and now it hit the ground. I just found it funny. Um, but yeah. Um, so we've been making some slight aesthetic changes. Uh, one thing, uh, I think I may have changed, made some slight changes to some of the power-ups. Ah, uh, man. Oh, yes. One thing is, originally, the plan was to have the player invisible, uh, completely invisible, and then they would have a pair of black leather boots that they would wear around so you could see them. And, of course, if they're holding their bow, you can see that. But the problem is with these little thingies is that um, if you stood, like, here, you would be completely invisible to anyone down there because of this half slab here and the blocks, so they couldn't see your boots. And it occurred to me that what I can do is I can make it so the player is half invisible. And how I'm going to do that, I'll show you if I scoreboard. Oh, man. Not again. Okay, the internal server crashed again, like it did last episode. And that is really annoying. I don't know why that happens. It seems to happen when I'm recording. And that is not good. I think it might be a snapshot thing, but I don't know. I'll be right back. All right. Um, right. I'm actually having some trouble right now. Whenever I record, it seems to 
lagged this internal server, and I don't know why. Let's see if it's working now. Okay, it seems to be working now. Um, so as I was saying, I changed it so that um, if I um, the the map is going to have players that are semi invisible, and we are going to do that using the team property of being semi invisible. Would you look at that? And that way we can see players when they're coming through there and it and yet it's sort of ghost like, which I like, but it's also um you you can yeah, like it's invisible but you can still see them and I really like that. And uh, the thing is people with darker skins might have a slight advantage, but to be honest the advantage won't be that much considering they're not hard to see uh, when they're like this. Uh, but yeah, I really like this semi-invisible thing, and I, I originally thought that wasn't possible for two reasons. Uh, once, because I thought that the teams could not hurt each other. Like, if they were on the same team, the, the people couldn't hurt each other, which I realized that was stupid, because they can if I turn on friendly fire, like... Oh man, this is just disappointing. Uh, this is not my day to record today. Um, but, yeah. Um, what was the, the other reason was that the name tags. I thought the name tags were going to show, but then I realized I can just turn that off. So, I did, and this is the, the strategy I'm going to be going for as far as invisibility. I think it looks very cool, and uh, that's how the game's going to work. Alright, so let's get working on the map now that we've seen everything that I've changed. Well, at least, I th hope everything. If I did miss something, I'll add it in the future. Uh, but the first thing we are going to do is we are going to add an About the Minigame section. Because we definitely need that, because we don't want people not knowing what they're going to be doing in our map. So, um, yeah, so obviously we don't have enough places. So what I'm going to ha have to do is I had to merge the start game and the the one with the the join game signs and whatnot. Um, but I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do that later. And over here we're going to have an about the minigame section. So here we're going to have a sign and it's going to say clip click for map information on it. Uh, I might change what it says. It might say minigame information or whatever. Uh, so you're going to have to right click it, right? Um, so to do that we're going to need a trigger, what's called a trigger objective, if you don't know what that is. So, to do that, we're going to create a new objective, scoreboard objectives, add, and we're going to call it about, because that's what the menu is going to be. It's going to be the, well, not a menu, but a little thing. It's going to be about the map, right? So we're going to call it about, and then we're going to make it of type trigger, like this. And it makes a new objective called about of type trigger. And then we're going to update the data of the sign, so that when we click on it, we're going to add a click event here. The action is run a command, and the value is trigger uh, about set 1. So set the scoreboard about, set it to 1. So if we set the, s the sidebar here, scoreboard, and what would it look about? So it should be nothing, and if I power this command block, it should update the block data. Let's see, did it do that? Block data updated too. Yep. So now if I right click. Ah, come on. It should display a one on the side. If I let's try this. Invalid trigger name about. I'm doing something wrong here. I'll be right back. And you guys are probably all yelling at me because I forgot to enable the trigger. So what we need to do is we're going to have a command block on a clock that does the scoreboard players enable uh, at a about. And that enables the about trigger. So we can right click on the sign and it sets that to 1. So now we're going to go over to the redstone area and we're going to make it so that actually does something. So, I have been doing a lot of JSON work with the tell raw command, and now when we right click on the sign, it's going to set our about score, and it's going to put some text in the chat. 
So, welcome to Shadow Strike, a mini game made by Nanorex and Superlink. We're going to have a bunch of random text here, yeah, about the map. Use the below buttons to learn about the map. And then we've got our buttons here, and click here to create, yeah, blah, blah. click here to visit the creator's YouTube channel. And then this, when you click on it, it's going to take me to, take you to my YouTube channel, which has not been, um, what do you call it? it I haven't done the, uh, the JSON for that yet, but here we can... Uh, roll over this to learn the basic elements of Shadow, Shadow Strike and how to win. Learn about the power-ups in this minigame and how to use them. And, oh dear. Alright, i got to fix that. If you roll over in between, it says that. So I'm going to have to fix that. I know how to fix that. And last one, learn about the Shadow Strike. So when you click on these different ones, they're going to take you to the different... Um, we call it, they're they're going to take you to the different sections and they are a bit long if your window's small it goes off the window and you can't see it but there's no way to actually fix that if you make it a new line it will make it so that first line is colored and the second line isn't which is really a shame but I'm gonna work actually first before I finish this I'm gonna show you how it works um, so let's teleport to the redstone so this fill clock here is constantly first is constantly enabling any players about trigger so they can right click on the sign whenever they want and then here we are setting their about score to zero after it's done so it doesn't spam that message and then these are our tell raw commands and each one corresponds to one line so there's one two three four five six seven lines my bad this is actually one line so if if you have a big enough screen or if it's if your uh, multiplayer settings are right or whatever it will actually take up one line um, so yeah there are seven I actually have six here one two three four five six seven I don't know what's up with that am I counting wrong am I counting wrong yeah I, I have seven what am I talking about anyways yeah I'm, I'm tired it's late um, but the first one obviously tells you nothing and so does the the, s the third one, fifth, and seventh one, so I'm not going to go over those. This one is basically just a basic tell raw uh, with anyone to a score with about of one. Those are, uh, that's what it all is. Actually, I should add them, um, I should make it so it has to be exactly one because I'm going to use different scores for the different menu bits. Uh, Welcome to Shadow Strike, blah, 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 blah. And then its color is gray, and same with the last one currently, and then these ones uh, all have hover events um, that tell you how to, um, th the hover events that do this. And uh, if you don't know how to use JSON text like this, I'm going to provide a link in the description to a very helpful post on the Minecraft forum about it that teaches you basically everything you need to know. It's not completely done yet, but everything you need to know about JSON text in Minecraft and how to use it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that some bugs with this and I am going to add the the actual things here that you can click on. Okay, time for another progress update. Um, so now when we click on the map we get that same text. Welcome to Shadow Strike, a minigame. Blah, 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 blah. This time I fixed the uh, bug where it said stuff in between. That's because this original text was the root text, and I didn't know that that was like the parent text, and all these children text have the attributes of the parent text. Uh, if you're into coding, you'll know what I'm talking about, but otherwise you might you might have no idea. Um, but yeah, so now learn the basic uh, these are fixed um, there's now a thing here that says the URL so you don't know you're clicking on a link that you don't want to go to so if I click on it it brings open this thing and if I click yes it will bring me to my YouTube channel um, and if I click on these you'll notice it will say about the game about the power-ups about the shadow strike and that's just temporary um, but I know it works I can I'm gonna change what that text says obviously uh, but now let's check out how that works. So if I go to the redstone, um, this has been completely filled up. So this this is the normal stuff here, and then I've changed this one here. So now it's got a each of those texts has a as well as a hover event also has a click event here. Uh, the action is run command, and the value is trigger about set 
to 4 for that one. So each one of these, so when I click on the sign, my trigger gets set to 1. And that's how it knows to tell me this message here. The, all the ones with the orange, the orange uh, blah, blah, clay underneath them. And then uh, with the different one, this one sets my trigger to 2. You'll notice it said here, this one sets it to 3, and this one sets it to 4. And then each of these ones with the yellow clay underneath them will tell it to a score with about of 2 and 3 and 4 respectively. And then that's how that system works. So I'm going to finish this uh, just writing in what the text is going to say. And then that will be it for this part of the system. So I have finished up the map information sign. So now when we right click, it will bring up our little text here and then we can click on the different buttons so now it will actually say something uh, so here's what I have I might change these up if I either change something in the map or figure out that there's something else that I would need to say so Shadow Strike is a relatively simple minigame in which semi-invisible players try to shoot, try to, bleh, can't read, try to shoot each other with their shadow blasters whoever makes the required number of kills adjustable via the options, uh, game options board first is the winner Making a kill will grant you regeneration for 30 seconds. And if I click power-ups, power-ups are found throughout this map in the form of ender crystals. Running over a power-up will activate it, giving you one of five possible power-ups. Oh, I put a dash there. I was deciding not to do that. I'll have to fix that. Which are evenly weighted. The five possible power-ups are 15 seconds of absorption 5, 15 seconds of regeneration 2, 30 seconds of night vision, an ender pearl, or a shadow bomb, a potion, that when thrown deals 10 seconds of wither and blindness. The power-ups will take a random amount of time between 30, second, 30 and 60 seconds to respawn. And then the Shadow Strike, I haven't actually... Um, oh, there we go. It, it just still says about the Shadow Strike because I don't actually know what to put there because I haven't implemented the Shadow Strike. Uh, it's not a fully formed idea yet. I did say in the last episode, at the very end, that it was going to work on that in this episode, and I still don't really know what to do for that. So I might work to do that ne next episode, and I might do that in the one after, or I don't really know, but it's not a fully formed idea yet. I need to finish it up before I actually implement it. Okay, so now that we're done that, the other thing that I've done is I fixed up this game options board. So now, the kills required to win is displayed on here, and then we can uh, press this button here, to increase it and it goes all the way up to 100 if you really want to play it that long and then 5 is the minimum like this and these are actually quick buttons they go obviously they go faster than a regular button so let's just see how this works here um, so when we press the button it'll activate this redstone line which activates these four command blocks I'm gonna go over these two first these ones simply replace the button with an unpushed button and this redstone with an unpowered redstone so that it uh, so we can push the button really really fast so you can see that happening there these two command blocks are replacing the button and that redstone um, and this one here is adding to uh, adding a score of required kills of one to the squid with the name score tracker with a maximum of 99 already and that squid Let's go take a look at him. He is right there. That is our squid. He is going to be used to track scores that um, are not assigned to players. Uh, and I don't want to use a fake player name because then I can also use selectors uh, on the squid, like um, if it has a maximum score of this or whatever. If I just used a fake player, I can't do that. Um, but then there was an al another issue. Let's go back to the lobby and I fill out the bottom that uh, let's see so we've got the block data this one updates the block data on this sign so that it actually displays the number um, so on the bottom line here it it the score is the name of hash display and then in required kills and the reason I can't use the squid there is because if the squid is in the spawn chunks it doesn't work for some reason and it just displays nothing uh, with any JSON stuff so I had to make a fake player name for this, and then back at the redstone, we have a command block back there that does a scoreboard operation using the new uh, equals thing, and it basically sets 
the one for hash display to the same as the squid. And the hash just makes it so if the player called display ever comes on this map, it won't break. Because um, you can't put hashes in your name. Uh, so let's go back to the lobby. And then, yeah, the same thing is on the other side, except obviously instead of add, we have sub subtract, and it's got to have at least six in order to make a se successful subtraction. And this is what we're going to be using to track the number of kills that you have to, well, yeah, obviously, the kills that you need to make in order to win the game. All right, it is now time for the final progress update for this episode of map making. And I have just about finished the lobby now because I've been working on the game joining feature. Uh, obviously, there's some little things that we need to do, like teleportation to the lobby from the spawn. But I've done the start game feature. So this looks a bit ugly right now. I might fix it up so it doesn't look as stupid. I might reposition some of the stuff because it's in a weird spot. But basically, we have a sign that indicates that you have to push the button to start the game. And that doesn't do anything yet. Um, that's going to make it so it teleports everybody, blah, 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 blah. But what I have done is more Telra Jason stuff. Um, so now I've got three signs here. And clicking on them will change my game state. So if I join the game, Captain Rack 7567 will be participating in the next match. If I click on it, it doesn't do anything after that. Uh, if I do leave game, I will be sitting out on the next match. Uh, same thing. And spectate, I'll be spectating on the next match. And that's how that works. And it will join you to different teams. As you can see, my name is a different color. Um, it will either join me to the lobby team or the playing team or the spectating team. So let's go off to the redstone and just see how that works. Uh, where is it? Over here. So we have another fill clock. We're getting a lot of these fill clocks. Um, and I, I actually hope only have this one turned on at the moment because when I have these turned on it I can't record because it just lags too much for some reason um, so yeah so first what we're gonna do is once again we're enabling the trigger for everybody at all times then each of these three sections is the same uh, there's one for each sign obviously so the first one <clears throat> will set all players okay I should explain first that the sign the signs each set your your join game score, that's what they do. The first one sets it, or the join game sign sets it to one, the spectate sets it to two, and the the uh, stick around the lobby one sets it to three. Um, so what's it's, first it's gonna do is if you're already on the game team, the sorry, the in-game team, it's going to set your join game score to zero. If, if, if you click on the sign. So this score, join game, blah, 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 basically says if you click on the sign, but you're already on that team, set it to zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to invalidate these two command blocks so they won't run. So that's why, that's how we can only click on it once. And then this one, so if that first command didn't execute, these second ones are going to execute. Um, so the first one is just going to join you to that team if you clicked on the button, on the sign. And then the next one is going to do that tell raw. It's going to tell everybody that that person has joined or would be participating in the next match. And then these two are exactly the same, except they say different things and have different scores. This one's two and this one's three. And different teams, of course. Then finally, we want to set everyone's join game score back to zero so that we can still use the signs again. But unfortunately, that is all the time I have for this episode. Um, in the next episode, hopefully... Uh, I'll do some stuff in between episodes, and we'll just sort of do the same thing. But remember to leave a comment about whether you think that I should get this out for 25000 or I should try and do that or not. Um, but yeah, that is all the time I have for today. So if you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to leave a like, and follow me on Twitter at NanoRexMC for more updates. But thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Rex out.